from the gushing geysers of Giant to the plutonium-powered time machine of Back to the Future, Energy at the Movies illustrates how filmmakers have captured the history of energy. Join energy expert and professor Dr. Michael Weber as he explores 70 years of energy on the big screen. Energy at the Movies. How do you like that intro? It sounds like Dallas or something. <laughs> My name is Michael Weber. Thank you for coming tonight. Welcome to Energy at the Movies. Uh, we're going to do two things tonight. We're going to watch some fun movie clips, and we're also going to learn about energy. And it turns out you can do both of those things at the same time because movies are historical documents, and energy has been a rich source of material for those historical documents. So by watching movies, we can actually learn the story of energy. I have two goals tonight. One is I want to change the way you think about movies. I want to get you out of the plot and the storyline and the dialogue and all the characters and all that stuff. And I want you to pay attention to the rest of the frame to look for historical clues about energy because they're in there and they will tell us about the historical context, what's going on in society at the time that movie or film was made. I also want to change the way you think about energy. Energy is not static, it's dynamic. It changes with time. And it's very easy for us today to think that the way we consume energy today will always be that way to the future, but it will change and it has changed. So that's the punchline. Movies are historical documents and energy changes with time. Let's talk about nuclear now. Nuclear is kind of confusing for the movies. Coal was bad. Oil was good, then confusing, then bad. Nuclear was bad when it came out in the 70s and 80s, the movies at least. That's when we did our big nuclear build out. We built a lot of power plants in the 70s, early 80s, and movies came out and said it was bad. The China Syndrome. It's about people, people who lie, and people faced with the agony of telling the truth. It will start with a tremor in a nuclear power plant. Where it will end will depend on three people. I would say you're probably lucky to be alive. Same for the rest of Southern California. There was a vibration! No, that accident is the right word. Accident is the right word! The closer they get, no. the more threatening it becomes. No. The China no. Syndrome. You Today, only a handful of people know what it really means. And they're scared. Everybody keep your station! Everybody keep your station! Soon. You will know the China Syndrome. Okay, so that wasn't a happy movie. Uh, it's sort of a, <laughs> it gives a negative view, nuclear, we'll say that. It talks about human error and greed and corruption in this nuclear power plant coming within days of causing a near meltdown. People credit or blame China Syndrome for killing the nuclear power industry. We had a lot of growth in nuclear power plants in the 70s through the early 80s. This movie comes out in 79, halts new construction, essentially. Some people say this did for nuclear energy what Jaws did for sharks kind of thing. 